quiet. So you can kind of see the aerial photo here that Jeff's printed off. And um, this is the spot that we're looking for right there. You'll notice it's a field and a little line of trees. You know, that's suspicious. you got to wonder what's going on. Why, the, why do the trees go out in the middle of the field? So that's what we're going to investigate on the ground right now. So this is what Jeff had seen on the map. This is a telling feature when you have a field and just like the line of trees stretching out into it, it either means it's a fence line or it means there's a sinkhole, especially in this area. So that's what he's looking at in the air. That's what I pointed out to you guys. So this is obviously, uh, this is how we find caves. I mean, a lot of people have contacted me and says, oh, tell me where this is, tell me where that is. I mean, you almost have to put a bit of time into it and do some looking and share your finds with other cavers. And, you know, exactly, you can see right here, we look at an aerial photo. Um, we then go and we do a ground search based on our hunch. Um, and uh, sometimes it turns up a cave, sometimes it doesn't. Well, in fact, we're looking at a stream here, uh, which is running quite strongly and stopping right here, suggests that uh, it's going down. After that, there's nothing. Yeah, there it is. So this is obviously when it goes down, you got a cliff nearby, it's coming out somewhere. Right? Human passage? Not likely. Not up here. It's following the joint. I mean, look at this. The, the ground is just absolutely riven with gaping furrows, what have you. I mean, this is what you would call a kind of a karstic terrain, and in particular, a hollow karst. Uh, not as in holocaust, but rather a karst, usually at the edge of a cliff where there's no running water whatsoever. It's all underground. You just know it's coming out lower down. So it looks like a great big fault line, but what we're really doing is we're following along from the sink point, trying to trace the route of this underground stream, you know, hoping that it might be following either joints that might connect to the surface, or the more likely possibility it's hitting a bedding plane lower down and then doing something entirely unpredictable. So here we are en route towards the spring, or what we think might be a spring. So, I mean, you're looking for, uh, for caves in Ontario, I'm quite used to now what's required to find a cave in Ontario. It doesn't mean I can find a cave anywhere, but it's definitely easy in Ontario. I mean, I understand the geology and the, the geography to some extent. This is different from, say, West Virginia. I mean, West Virginia, the rock is, the strata is sloping deep. It's going down deep and fast. Uh, a result of, you know, ancient de depositional situations here. The rock is layered, sometimes thinly, flatly, dollar stone often on the top, or at least in this area, until you get towards the Canadian Shield, where there'll be a lot of marble, a different kind of cave. But this area, dollar stone is what you're looking at. It's like a sponge. The, the water percolates through it, uh, goes down, and eventually hits the uh, impermeable bedding planes, which is where the tunnels will form. So that's kind of our thinking a lot of the time. That's how we kind of look for caves. So here's where this uh, spring comes out. Looks quite a significant flow here. Beautiful old sort of abandoned buildings. Jeff seems intrigued by what's going on, so it's got to be something. Head down and have a look. There's a cave in there for sure. Well, no surprise, of course. We're seeing the, uh, the green shale uh, down here again. I believe it might be the green shale, but I mean, it would make sense based on. I mean, there's some old, you know, ruined-looking buildings around here. As much uh, effort to myself. Uh, you can see behind the rubble. I'm not sure what I'm seeing. I believe there's passage back there. Uh, but, I mean, a lot of breakdowns, so you've got to be extremely careful in this rubble. Um, let's see what the still pictures show. What a beautiful spot this is, it really is. Um, so here comes your stream. And of course, at least back in the old days, you can see right over there, some kind of a settler's old log cabin. I guess this just kept them in supply of fresh water. Um, what a beautiful spot, eh? Kinda, you gotta wonder though, because you can see that the rock is pretty fractured up here. But there's too many bedding planes, you seldom get a really nice tunnel happening. Um, and that's exactly what I'm seeing there. It's, it's really sort of layered. You need a nice thick, thick block to, uh, to really get some cave tunnel happening. See this old 
log house. And uh, the, whole, the whole line of the cliff is, is quite heavily, you know, creviced. I mean, higher up on the, the cliff, the rock looks a, looks a little more solid. Still a lot of bedding planes though, and of course, see these ancient, ancient uh, cedars. Some of them are literally thousands of years old. Um, little tiny plants just bonsai by the, the time and the fact they have limited growing opportunities.